Hello everybody, welcome to the Executive Gardener channel, Jeff here. So I want to give you an update on my tomatoes. I finally figured out uh, these dwarf tomatoes, I don't remember the name of them, but if you go to Burpee, um, it's one of their um, determinate hybrid varieties. So it's not an heirloom variety, but here's how they're doing. So you see there's, there's plenty of uh, uh, flowers on all these, and uh, I started growing these from seed probably about uh, I don't know, two, about eight weeks to ten weeks ago, and uh, they're doing real well. I started them in uh, in the winter, and there's actually some little tomatoes coming uh, at the bottom here, and there's flowers here. Now these two I planted in the ground, as you'll see. One of the things I like about this burpee variety of heirloom, and I don't remember the name of it, but it's a dwarf variety. It's a bush variety, but it's got really good stems, really thick, so they don't tip much uh, in the wind. Um, and on this side I have my bags. So these are the grow bags. You'll see both are doing really well. Again, flowers everywhere. Um, I, and there's a little tomato down there. I've got about four or five on this, about three on this, and about the same on each of the others. But the bag variety you'll see is doing just as good as the, uh, the ones in the ground. My guess is that the ones in the ground will, because the roots can spread more, will get bigger. But it'll be interesting to see the size of the fruit difference between the bag variety and the ones that are in the ground. So we'll keep you posted on that. Um, one of the other things I wanted to talk to you about, and I talked about this a few videos ago, what I do when I plant all of mine is I use calcium nitrate, I use uh, uh, Epsom salt, so I put magnesium in there, and then I also use uh, uh, fish bone meal. And uh, the fish bone meal, of course, is the phosphorus that promotes the flower growth in all these. So this is why you see they're loaded with yellow flowers everywhere. And even when I dig the hole, I put a bunch of fish bone meal in the hole. I also put calcium nitrate in there. As most of you have heard of blossom end rot. That's when your tomato grows and you get a big brown spot at the end. I also put a bunch of calcium nitrate, you can buy in powder, in the hole and in the grow bags. And lastly, the Epsom salt, so uh, uh, magnesium sulfate. Uh, Sometimes your soil will be depleted or doesn't have a lot of magnesium sulfate, also good. And that's why you'll see these tomato plants are nice and green. You typically know you have a depletion in magnesium sulfate when your leaves are light in color, but these are very rich in green. The other thing I wanted to show you about is this is, this is actually the side of my house. This is uh, what I call my octagon, those UFC fans, or if you're not a UFC fan, they fight in an octagon. Well, this octagon is completely caged in and it keeps the birds from pecking at the tomatoes. And uh, it really works out well, and I encourage you all to do that because if you live in an area like Houston, the birds are the enemy. Uh, they like to pick, take one peck out of a red tomato and leave it. The other thing which is I want to show you is these things here. It's very important if you live in an area like Houston where you, or maybe other parts of the country where you have rats and mice. They will do the same thing. Very different, though. They'll come and take a bite. You'll see two teeth mark. And even a green tomato, not even red, and that's it. The tomato's ruined. So um, I put these traps everywhere. Sorry, sorry for your, uh, you guys that are a part of the Humane Society, but I'm not a big fan of the rat and mice, and uh, I use these and dispose of them. Uh, they're just complete pests, and they ruin your, uh, your, uh, your garden. So the other thing I wanted to show you is on the ground here. I did an episode on my weed cloth a few weeks ago, and... Um, I got a lot of interesting comments. Some of those comments were, you know, it's not going to work, it's not going to do this, that. But well, i got to tell you, since I've done this four weeks ago, we've been deluged with rain, tons of rain. Uh, if you live in Florida and, and Texas, you'll know what I mean by big rain. Uh, buckets. And look, voila, no, no weeds breaking through. It's done remarkably well. Now you'll see I've been a little sloppy. There's some dirt and some other stuff. But the only thing breaking through is the plants, which is a good thing. So... Uh, that's working out real well. So my, my uh, burpee uh, heirloom tomatoes are doing real well. Uh, let me show you one more thing here. And I did a video about this a few weeks ago, but uh, here's my, I have a few pepper plants down here. And what I did was I clipped the top of the pepper plant. Uh, as I've talked about many times, if you clip the top of the pepper plant, it will force growth, extra leaf growth here, and make the stem steadier, stronger, excuse me, so it can sustain heavier fruit. So I have a red beauty pepper plant here. I've got a sweet banana plant. Now this one you'll see, I just clipped. So I clipped this today, 
it hasn't shot out any uh, side shoots or any leaves, so that'll take some while, but this is starting to send some out. And the one over here, I've got a, uh, a big Bertha also sending um, uh, leaves out when I clipped it. So these are doing real well. Uh, let me turn the camera around and I'll show you some of my other tomato plants. So I've got a few other plants growing here. Some are heirloom, some are uh, hybrid. So um, let me show you a few of them. So I, I, this is about, uh, I got this from the store as a seedling. This is just a regular beefsteak hybrid. So I want some big juicy tomatoes this year, the big 10, 12, 14 ounces. This is this, uh, doing very well. It's already started to put out some flowers. This one is called the Boxcar Willy. The Boxcar Willy, uh, I watch someone else's channel on YouTube. He seems to like them a lot. Uh, they, he says they are his favorite uh, tomato, but I guess every person's got their own taste, so I guess I'll be the judge of that and my family. But already starting to send some flowers out. We expect some fruit soon. Boxcar Willy growing big. My favorite tomato that I have is actually called the Black Seaman, S-E-A-M-A-N. And this is an heirloom variety. Uh, you'll see it's right here. Not that old. I planted this from seed. So it's about, uh, I'd say, seven, uh, seven, eight weeks old. Uh, this is an heirloom. It gets big. So watch out. It grows out there. But it probably produces fruit that's 8 to 12 ounces red. And i got to tell you, if, if you don't have black semen tomatoes, you have never had it, you got to get it. It's unbelievable. It's the best sandwich hamburger type tomato I've had, or even in salads. Black semen. And then the other one, um, you can find these all over the place. It's called the New Big Dwarf. So um, this uh, got a little bit leggy. Uh, I planted it inside my grow tent, but it'll, it'll fill out. Uh, this will get to be about uh, one or two feet in size, bushy, with fruit about eight to ten ounces. So this is, I believe, an heirloom variety as well. So that's what I'm doing here. Now, if you look around, my, my, uh, my staples are coming out. But you look around, I still have some room to grow. But um, that's it. This is the side of my garden. And uh, uh, things are going great here. All I have to do is keep the mice in check, the fence, the bird, the fence, everything here. We'll keep the birds out. And I just got to, I don't have to worry about weeding, as you'll see. I don't have any weeds here. Uh, just got to make sure I keep it watered and uh, keep the mice out of here. Uh, but that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this quick episode. I do realize it is March 22nd here in Houston, Texas, Zone 8B. Many of you that are watching in lower zones, uh, numbers that are lower than mine, uh, are not even near planting outside. Um, and I know you guys are getting antsy to get out there and get stuff in the ground. I wanted to show you this so you can get excited Get your stuff in the ground soon. It'll be around the corner. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Executive Gardener. Uh, I enjoy this YouTube com community. If you have any friends that like gardening, please send this video to them. Uh, we're always learning from each other. Also, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. Subscribe, and we'll give you quick updates every week or so. Hope everybody has a great week. Take care. Bye.